Hello everyone, welcome back to Science Made Easy. Today, Science Made Easy is again back with an interesting topic about modes of pollination and mechanisms promoting self and cross pollination. To begin with, let us see the definition of pollination. Pollination is referred as the transfer of pollen grains from anthers to stigma. Modes of pollination. Now, let us see what are the different modes of pollination. Self pollination. When pollen from anther falls on the stigma of the same flower, it is called as self pollination or autogamy. Cross pollination. When pollen from anther of one flower of one plant falls on the stigma of another flower of another plant, it is called as cross pollination or allogamy. Cross pollination involves two flowers and two plants. The third situation arises. Where pollen from anther of one flower falls on the stigma of another flower, both the flowers belonging to the same plant. The situation is called as gaitanogamy. The genetic consequences of gaitanogamy are similar to the autogamy or self-pollination. So, in some conditions or cases, the gaitanogamy is considered as self-pollination, often cross-pollination. Though some plants undergo self-pollination, a percentage of cross-pollination occurs in them ranging between 5% to 30%. Such crops are called as often cross-pollinated crops. Mechanisms promoting cross-pollination. There are several mechanisms that promote cross-pollination. These are briefly described below. Dichlinea or unisexuality. It is a condition where the flowers are either staminate or pistillate. That is, these flowers have either the male or the female reproductive parts in them. It is of two types, monoecious condition and dioecious condition. Monoecious is a condition where the staminate and the pistillate flowers are present in the same plant. These flowers may be present in the same inflorescence or in the different inflorescence. The plants like castor, mango, banana, coconut have these flowers in the same inflorescence and the plants like maize have these flowers in the different inflorescence. In simpler terms, monoecious condition may be described as having a single home. That is, these flowers are present in single plant that is in the same plant and dioecious is a condition where the flowers that is the staminate and the pistillate flowers are present in different plants. The flowers, oh, sorry, the plants like papaya, date palm, hemp, asparagus, spinach have these flowers in different plants. In simpler terms, dioecious is a condition where the flowers have two different homes. The next mechanism is dichogamy. It is seen in hermaphrodite flowers. Though the flowers have both male and female reproductive parts in the same flower, they encourage cross-pollination to occur by having different maturing times of male and female reproductive parts. It is of two types, protoandry and protogyny. Protoandry is a condition where the stamens mature before the stigma. Protoandry is seen in crops like maize and sugar beet. Protogyny. Protogyny is a condition where the stigma matures before stamen. Protogyny is seen in crops like pearl millet. Heterostyly. It is a condition where the flowers have styles of different length. This promotes cross-pollination to occur. It is of two types, dystyly and tristyly. Dystyly is seen in primula. Primula has two types of flowers. These are pin and thumb thrum flowers. The pin flowers have long styles and short stamens and the thrum flowers have short styles and long stamens. Due to the difference in the length of the styles and stamens of the same flower, self-pollination doesn't occur in them and they promote only cross-pollination. That is, pin flowers can uh, pollinate only with thrum flowers and thrum flowers can pollinate only with pin flowers. Tristyly is the next type of heterostyly. It is seen in lythrum. In lythrum, there are three types of flowers, one with the long style, the second one with medium style and the third one with short style. Again here, due to the difference in the length of the style and stamen, Self-pollination doesn't occur and they promote only cross-pollination. This is similar to dystyly. Hercogamy. It is a mechanism in which the presence of physical barrier prevents self-pollination to occur. For example, in crops like lucerne and alfalfa, the stigma is covered with wax film due to which self-pollination doesn't occur in them and cross-pollination is promoted. The next mechanism is self-incompatibility. Self-incompatibility is a condition in which the pollen from a flower fails to fertilize its own flower. Remember that in self-incompatibility, the pollen may be functional but it fails to fertilize its own flower. It is seen in species of brassica like mustard, ray and cauliflower. It is also seen in nicotiana, radish and ray. The next mechanism is male sterility. 
It is a condition which arises due to the absence of functional pollen. That is, these flowers doesn't produce a functional pollen. It is of three types. Genetic male sterility, cytoplasmic male sterility and cytoplasmic genetic male sterility. These are the different mechanisms that promote cross-pollination and prevent self-pollination. Now let us continue by understanding what are the different mechanisms promoting self-pollination to occur. Bisexuality. It is a condition of having hermaphrodite flowers. That is the male and the female reproductive parts are present in the same flower. This flower has both the male and female reproductive parts in the same flower. Homogamy. It is a condition where the male and the female reproductive parts of the flower mature at the same time. It increases the probability of self-pollination to occur. The next mechanism is cleistogamy. In cleistogamy, the flowers do not open at all. Due to which the foreign pollen cannot reach the stigma of the closed flower. This ensures self-pollination occur. It is seen in crops like wheat, oats and barley. Chasmogamy. In chasmogamy, the flowers do open, but the opening of the flowers is after occurrence of the pollination. It is seen in most of the cereals like wheat, barley, rice and oats. The position of the anthers also ensures self-pollination to occur. In some plants, the stigmas are closely surrounded by anthers. It is seen in crops like tomato and brinjal. And in some plants, the stamens and the stigma are hidden by floral organs to ensure self-pollination. This is seen in legumes like pea, mung bean, urad bean, soya bean, gram, in which the keel petal encloses the stamens and stigma to ensure self-pollination. If you see this image, this is the keel petal which, uh, which has enclosed the stamens and stigma to ensure self-pollination. This is about different modes of pollination and mechanisms promoting self and cross-pollination. Thank you for watching the video and follow Science Made Easy for more such videos.